brought to you by Kellogg's. Kellogg's Cereals. The best to you each morning from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left, a wonderful actor, very amusing, a darling, who is about to appear in a new picture called The Brass Bottle. Mr. Tony Randall. Thank you, Dorothy. <laughs> and now here's a girl I'm in love with, aside from you, Dorothy. Arlene Francis. <laughs> you told me to say that? I told him to say that. <laughs> And now, a gentleman and a scholar, a man who has both attributes in abundance, our traveling Random House publisher, Mr. Bennett Cerf. Well, in the course of my travels this week, my pilot flew me over Lake Bemidji in Minnesota <laughs> and uh, came down, showed me a statue of Paul Bunyan and his blue ox. And I said, why have you built a statue to Paul Bunyan? And he said, well, in this part of the country, we think he was the greatest teller of tall tales and prevaricator that we ever had. And I said, well, we have a fellow on What's My Line, and here he is, and his name is John Charles <laughs> Daly. <laughs> I'm sure what really happened is Bennett was up at Lake Itasca, the headwaters of the Mississippi, you'll remember his confusion about where the Mississippi rose. Whose confusion? Your confusion. You know that as well as I do. Well, having a Sunday off was good for all of us, I guess. I went out and got my B.S., a Bachelor of Psychology at the Strategic Air Command Base in uh, Omaha. I must say, a wonderful force of men that uh, we all owe a tremendous debt to. I guess we don't really understand how much we do owe them. And then... Uh, Mayor Gordon Clinton up in Seattle taught me about fresh crab and fresh salmon, and the Water Pollution Control Federation made me an honorary member, and that's something Bennett will never be made. An honorary <laughs> member. <It's me> <laughs> <laughs> but I do think this, if we drop him in Lake Itasca, we'll have a whole new job to do. <laughs> but I hope all of you had a good day off. I must say it was kind of fun. At least I found it so. Tony, you didn't really have a day off, but we'll put you to work tonight anyway. We have some very interesting occupations, and... Uh, We'll have a mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program, but we'll meet our first challenger after this word. And now to meet our first challenger, will you enter and sign in, please? Murray Spitzer, right, sir? Spitzer, where are you from, sir? Brooklyn. Brooklyn, Brooklyn New, New York. York. Oh, well, heavenly days. This is hard. This is just a formality, then. Uh, our panel, Mr. Spitzer, will you join me over here, please? Uh, you know how we keep score? Oh, yes. In that event, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Tell you that Mr. Spitzer is self-employed. He deals in a product, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, Mr. Spitzer, do you think that there is anyone on this panel who might enjoy your product or one similar to it? I can think of somebody on the panel who could. <laughs> I would say to this, Dorothy, there is a circumstance under which it would be reasonable to expect that any member of the panel would find the products that Mr. Spitzer is with is uh, concerned with uh, useful and, and uh, uh, appropriate. appropriate. Mm -hmm. But would you say, Mr. Spitzer, that we could all live our lives 
through without having this product. Yes. Uh, do you think, or would you ask John if he thought that Bennett could use this product? <laughs> Don't tempt me, I'm wretched. <laughs> Uh, is this product something that you would use under seasonal or special circumstances? Not necessarily, no. One down and nine to go, Mr. Randall. Well, it would seem that this is a product that is not used too much by people. Is that, is that the gist? Well, then it's a people. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, John. Uh, well, in a sense, they do. Yeah, I would say here, to be fair to you, Tony, that... Uh, taking the construction of your question, I would say that it is used by people, but not necessarily by great numbers of people or uh, directly with respect to people. I really don't know if I got a yes or a no. That's <laughs> well, wait, you got a yes. And I'm a little, I'm, I'm, in fact, I'm not sure myself what you got, so you better go ahead. I see. Is this a useful product? Yes. Is it a, what you would describe as a manufactured product? Yes. Is it manufactured from many, uh, from many components? Yes. Have these components, at least some of them at ever, any time, been alive? Well, Living we, in the sense of <laughs> vegetable or animal? Well, their origin would be vegetable or animal, and in the initial relationship of the product's component to the vegetable or the animal, we would guess they were alive or the product would be having a little trouble by now. Now do you know? Yes, I think I do. Is this, uh, in the larger sense, a consumable product? Consumable, yes. Is it an edible product? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss French. Is it used by people on something else? Yes. Is it ever used on animals? of any kind? Yes. Is it anything that makes the animal feel better as a result of it having been used upon it? Yes. Is it something like a flea powder? <laughs> <laughs> or no. something that cleans the animal? No. No, and I would say here while giving you the no that uh, we are assuming that animals react very much as humans do sometimes, and therefore there would be a sense of well-being after the use of the product uh -huh. in that sense. Mr. Sir. Mr. Spitzer, is this product of yours attached to the animal in any way when it's in use? You mean put on and, and uh, well, attached in the sense, with a catch in, or a... In the sense of a saddle or a blanket no. or a hook no. for a horseshoe. Well, that's fine. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mr. Spitzer, uh, in the lives that we lead ordinarily, is there a product for humans that would be a parallel to this product for animals? Yes. Does it in any way cleanse or perfume the animal? Yes. Does it cleanse? Yes. Is it dog or horse or cow or pig soap? <laughs> well, uh, this, can I? Yeah, we've got to have a small cup. Pig soap? Pig soap. <laughs> I don't trust them on this program. <laughs> I would say well, we'd have to agree, Dorothy, that you, uh, you have an area of identification here, which we can't deny, and we give you a yes to it. Uh, well, is the word soap correct, or would something else be better? Well, it, the soap is correct as far as it goes. Does that help? Oh, it's <laughs> bubble bath for poodles. Well, I'm going to put it all over, because I think really Dorothy has got it. Bubble bath, I don't think so. But no, we do no. have nail polish, uh, mascara <laughs> for the eyes, makeup for dogs? perfumes, cosmetics, cosmetics for dogs. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Spitzer is the head of the Animal Hygiene Research Corporation, and he markets a whole line of nail polish in eight different colors, right? That's right. Nail polish and uh, cold cream or cream? No, no, it's not cream, cream shampoo, cream, perfume. perfume. Why can't they use the same nail polish we do? Because of the construction of the animal's uh, uh, nails, claws are different. Mm. How, um, how's business, Mr. Spitzer? <laughs> Pretty good, Mr. Randall. Good. Poodaloo is doing a fine job. Yeah, that's the name of the line. Poodaloo. Daly, might I ask you, 
which member of the panel you thought would use this part. <laughs> Did you, or did you infer from anything that I said, Bennett, that a member of the panel would use this product directly on his or her person? It was an inference that seemed to float in this general direction. Tuck, tisk, 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 and toodaloo. Thank you very much, sir. Thank very you. nice to see you. <laughs> Our next challenger, will you enter and sign in, please? <coughs> Patty? Thomas. Is that right? <laughs> it, uh, Miss or Mrs.? Thomas? Oh, it's Miss. Miss Thomas. Where are you from, Miss? Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. May I present the panel, Miss Thomas? Will you join me over here, please? Do you know how we keep score on what's my line? In that event, we'll let the audience here and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel, we can tell you that Miss Thomas is self-employed and deals in a service. And we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett, sir. Miss Thomas, I have a weakness for Oklahoma girls. My oh, wife wonderful. is an Oklahoma girl from Oklahoma City. Oh. Uh, does the service that you perform apply to people? Oh, yes. It does. Mm -hmm. Do you perform the service for both men and women? Yes. When you perform the service, do you come into direct contact with the people that you're performing it for? You mean physical contact or she into does, the Ms. proximity Thomas, too? No, I, I'm, I have to say, does she touch them? We must have a small conference. <laughs> I don't think so. No. No, no. actually what Miss Thomas said, outside of the casual um, greeting, the shaking of hands in a perfectly routine way, no, Bennett. So that makes it one down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Miss Thomas, may I rule out that you have anything to do with wigs? With what? Wigs. Yes, this is mine, really. Aside <laughs> 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 from that, And at this golden moment, I'd like to throw in that mine is, too. <laughs> I mean, that has nothing to do with your profession. No. Okay. Yes, it has not, no. All right. Uh, <laughs> men and women, uh, do they come to you for your services or to observe you plying your services? That sounds like an animal. No. <laughs> yes, they come to observe me. They come to observe you. Do you have anything to do with athletics or entertainment? No. Nope, that's two down and eight to go, Mr. Randall. Mr. Thomas, I'm also from Tulsa. Are you? Yes, well, indeed. Well, I know that. That's wonderful. <laughs> uh, I just forgot. Do you he's work a, in Tulsa? He's a pretty oily type. <laughs> <laughs> do you work in Tulsa? No. That makes it three down and seven to go, Miss Preston. <laughs> Don't you wish you came from Timbuktu now, huh? <laughs> Is there anything instructive about your work, Miss Thomas? Yes. Uh, do people come to you in uh, more than does more than one person at a time get instruction from you? Yes. Is it uh, a kind of instruction that requires action as well as words? I don't think. I think you said requires. I would say no. This does not exclude the possibility that action might be a a matter of presentation, but it would not be critical or necessary. So we'll give you a no. That's four down and six to go. Mr. Thomas, Sir. do children ever benefit from the, no doubt, superb service you perform? Yes. They do? Yes. Uh, would you say then that you had anything to do with school? Well, here, Bennett, uh, I think we have to reveal perhaps more than we'd like to. Uh, Miss Thomas does appear in connection with school routine. Does that answer your question? <laughs> but, On occasion. Yes, but then I can rule out teaching. You are not a teacher. You are not a school teacher. No. When you, but do you sometimes go to the schools to do what you do? Yes. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Are the people in the school pleased by your service that you perform? Mr. Sir, 
<coughs> I mean, really, that sort of question is hardly <laughs> Does it make... Uh, what I meant by that, John, was simply, does it make the people happier and leave them in a more cheerful frame of mind after you perform the service? I think so. I hope so. Do you use music in any way in connection with what you do? Yes, but that's irrelevant. Oh, Sometimes. What's that word? Irrelevant. <coughs> Don't give many any additional information. <laughs> you know all Music is things. sometimes used, but it's, again, it is not critically necessary, but it is used in a case. Do you exhibit some kind of thing when you make these appearances? No. no. Five down and five to go, Ms. Gilgallon. Uh, John, I need clarification, I'm afraid, because according to my notes, Ms. Thomas has work to do, or she does work that is instructive, but she does not teach nor does she entertain. Now, the question was, you are not a teacher in school. The answer to that was, yes, she is not a teacher but in school. But we also got a yes to instructive, which I believe Arlene That's right. asked. That's right. So it is instructive, but she does not teach. It is instructive, but it has been elicited that Miss Thomas is not a school teacher. But she goes into school. On occasion. Does she go other places in the course of whatever she does? Yes. Uh, could you possibly instruct or be instructive or useful to grown-ups as well as children? Yes. Uh, are they more alert to some possible danger because of what you do? I would think it would be safe, and I think Ms. Thomas will let me answer this, to say that Ms. Thomas would hope that there would be an awareness of, of uh, perhaps areas of uh, life which... Uh, would be uh, potentially more secure, proved, if they had listened and took the instruction. And yet she is self-employed, so she couldn't be... She, you don't work for the government, do you? No. <laughs> in telling people. Well, I'm going to throw all the cards in, because I think yes, you're, you're going... One right. question, John. Yeah. Is there any dangerous weapon used in what you do? <laughs> no, the very antithesis of a dangerous That's weapon. Uh, Miss Thomas is a preacher, an a evangelist. Preacher. Uh, <laughs> well, she is affiliated with the Assemblies of God Church and, and uh, preaches in many churches. Is a guest preacher, sometimes pre uh, goes to schools, which is why we had to answer mm -hmm. you in, in that line there. Are these public schools? Yes. I shouldn't think it would be allowed now because of... Well, let's not reason. open that particular <laughs> thing. We've only got a half an hour, Dorothy. We wouldn't be have all the pertinent facts, and just having you is enough anyway. Thank yeah. you very much, Ms. Douglas. Nice to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which, as you know, our panel members are always blindfolded. Are the blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, yes sir. Good. Will our mystery challenger enter and sign in, please? to a different form of questioning, one question at a time, in turn moving clockwise, and we'll begin with uh, Arlene Francis. Are you known for your work in uh, pictures? What did you say? <laughs> I would think the answer to that would be yes, Mr. Sir. Hmm. Uh, when you appear in pictures, do you ever sing or dance? What did you say, picture? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> that's not an answer. I would say that's not the, that's not the I basic fundamental... I come from fundament. Strasburg. Strasburg, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lord, I was at the, the, I the you. festival there once. Uh, <laughs> upstairs, see, you know, they got a big place there. They do Wagnerian music. <laughs> <laughs> Say who now? 
Darf ich? Was habe ich gesagt? <lacht> Push mein Leben drauf. Ja. Wir warten für Hosenstatten. Du bist ein Eiröcher, nicht? Ja, ja, ja. 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 Von, von Deutschland, vom Salzburg Festival. Wir waren ja mal. Ja, das verstehe ich nicht. Das ist nicht so. Darf ich? Ja, do you ever carry tea bags in your pocket? What you say? I carry sea bags in my pocket. You think I'm in the Navy? Who do you think it is, Darcy? I thought it was Red Button. Oh, no. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Randall. No, well, I got some Red Buttons, but you can't see them. I'll show you later some Red Buttons. Keep going. You mean I want to pass? No, I don't know who it is, but it seems to me I must be stupid not to, because anyone who talks that much in a voice I seem to know, I can't. Well, you are stupid. What you make such a big fuss about? Darlene? Are you known and loved for your work in television? Yes. What you say? Are you known for your work in television? Yes. Are you known for your what work in television? I'm known for my work outside of television. Two. Yeah, two. Oh, wow. Three. The two O's on. Who do you think it is, Arlene? Is it a writer? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Three, yeah. Well, a writer now, yes. Yeah. Three dotted seven to go. Go Ra ahead. Ryder Haggard, they call me. <laughs> or a Haggard writer. Yeah, Haggard. Do you ever, uh, do you ever make after dinner speeches in the course of your operation? Yeah, only before dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got a hot plan all of a sudden. Dorothy? Oh. Uh, well, sit still and it'll pass over. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it doesn't pass over me. <laughs> Besides, you have any show pass over? Pass over, yeah. Oh, Venice passed what over. That was a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Just say when. Say when no. or say it now, if you're going to say when. You've got to fight oh. your own way in this Are forest. You? Are you a professional singer as well as everything else? That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Randall. I'm not, is it Danny Kaye? That's four down and six to go, Arlene Francis. No. Couldn't be. Um, do you perform as a stand-up comic? Uh, not if he can sit down or lie down. I put him throw him all over. I'm hey, mad. what are you doing here? Are you taking my stuff here? I was I going guess. to say that. <laughs> I guess. You mind your business, can I, Lee, no, you Can I guess? I take your job, you take mine. Good deal. Yeah. I'm Groucho Marx. It's Mark. Groucho Marx. That's right. Oh, no. Wow. I was quite honest when I said he is a writer now because Groucho has written a book, uh, four, Memories four, of... Four books. Four books. I mean, a new one. Memoirs of a Mangy Lover. Memoirs of a Mangy Lover. <laughs> <laughs> Only he could do that, you know. Which when is it coming out? We're going to have the pleasure of distributing. Uh, yeah, thank You're you. You're going to distribute it, Barry? Yes. Oh, fine. fine. It'll be out the 18th and back again the 19th. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's... It's exhilarating to have Groucho show up in a program that you're supposed to be running because you stop running it the minute he gets in. I don't know what's happened. I know you were copying minutes. What's My Line and you were doing my part. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It was pure self-defense. Groucho, can I thank you? We did you? a show once before, remember, years ago? Yes, we had a wonderful time. Yes, we did. Doing you it. told me you never forgot that. No, Except never. right now, you can't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Where is this magnificent tome that I'm hawking up here tonight? Isn't anybody going to bring it out? <laughs> it it's isn't all sold here. out. It isn't here. Go over, go over and see Bennett and see what sold he's got out. to say about it. The first edition is completely sold out. And there isn't one copy extant? No, not extant. Or <laughs> not extant. Or in there. Yeah. You want me to take it, Father? Yeah, because I got to. This was a I waste of evening. I went to see Thank you. Well, you've done very well so far tonight, panel. We'll be back after this word from our alternate sponsor. <laughs> if you would like to know where yeah, Groucho like Marx is, he's right on the other side of the stage, and I've lost control of everything, so I would say for all of the panel and for Groucho, for everybody, thank you, good night, and thanks for being with us on What's My Life. What's My Life?
My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Cotton. Johnny Olsen speaking.